Well, everybody's always asking me about her, you know. What kind of, what kind of girl is she? She seems like a real bitch. <laughs> oh, she must be very aggressive and pushy. You know, they have these whole preconceived ideas of girl who gets to where Gloria is in life, what one has to do. It makes me sad because of the bitch part. I mean, that really gets to me. I guess maybe it's worse than I think. So, I mean, I don't hear those comments, but what I've uh, come to understand lately is it's not always personal. It is, is that all women come in for this. It's, if, if you don't play your role, you know, if you dare to aspire to something, then, then you get it automatically. But it's hard for me to remember that. Gloria Steinem, already a leader in the women's liberation movement, co-founded in 1972, a magazine that would help to galvanize feminism and unite women across the country. Steinem founded Ms. Magazine to be a breakthrough voice for women as active participants in society. The magazine worked as a large-scale mouthpiece for the burgeoning women's liberation movement, which was gaining momentum in the 1960s and 70s. When you're talking about the 1960s, before liberation really takes off, before civil rights takes off, mm -hmm. you're talking about a post-war period where, for most women, um, they'd gone backwards in terms of social and political rights and also cultural norms. Media was pretty segregated. It was segregated in terms of who, what things were sort of designed to be sort of uh, mainstream, but that really imagined you were largely writing for a male audience versus women's magazines, which wouldn't have had news in them or kind of more serious things. Everything from like the newspapers, there would be the normal section of the newspaper and then there'd be the women's page. Women's publications in the 1950s targeted females as consumers and were called service magazines. Housewives were still trapped in suburbs, the drudgery of housework and increasing burden. Yeah, you know, a lot of women have really, they really struggle with this. So that's why there's a ready sort of area for people like Betty Friedan when she, that she really taps into with her book, um, the Feminine Mystique in 1963. The Feminine Mystique was a commentary on the state of subservience into which women had fallen. The book was a call to awareness for housewives and is credited with kicking off women's liberation on a large scale. It is literally like a bomb that changed the landscape. The women's movement also began to take off when women involved in the student rights and civil rights movements realized that they, too, were in need of basic rights. What was happening was really the same thing that happened between the, uh, the beginning of the abolitionist movement and the beginning of the, suffrage, the suffragist movement. Women who were in, white women and black women, in the abolitionist movement, who were not allowed to speak out because they were women, could not fail but make the comparison with race and understand that just as there needed to be a racial liberation movement, there needed to be one, a women's liberation movement. As women's liberation gained momentum, journalist Gloria Steinem was working undercover. Posing in 1963 as a Playboy bunny in Hugh Hefner's New York Playboy Club, she was actually intending to write an expose for Show Magazine. Steinem also wrote for New York Magazine, but found she was usually assigned mundane women's interest stories. It was only really covering that abortion hearing for New York Magazine and hearing other women testify about their experiences that I realized I wasn't alone. Steinem had had an abortion shortly after graduating from Smith College, but had never told anyone. Listening to the abortion hearing, she realized a major feminist movement was needed to reach other women who felt isolated. In 1969, she published her first major feminist article, After Black Power, Women's Liberation, and rocketed to fame as a leader in the women's movement. Betty Friedan was a rather irascible, difficult, brilliant leader. Gloria Steinem is younger, she's gorgeous, she's incredibly good at handling diplomacy, and she's glamorous. Unlike Friedan, Steinem welcomed African Americans and lesbians into the movement. She attracted the media, which had previously dismissed the burgeoning feminist movement as unimportant. 
Stein used her glamour and connections as a journalist to bring the movement to national attention. Speaking throughout the nation, Stein became a symbol of feminism. It was just astounding that there would be these huge crowds and people would stay for hours afterwards and talk and form groups and um, go immediately march against the offending employer or television station or newspaper. In 1971, over 200 women staged a sit-in in the offices of the Ladies' Home Journal. They demanded a feminist issue of the magazine and were eventually promised one. Although this special issue was read by thousands more women than the smaller feminist publications, it was only a one-time event. Also in 1971, Steinem and her friend, Brenda Feigen Fasto, founded the Women's Action Alliance. They soon began to consider producing a periodical newsletter for the group. So it grew into an idea for a magazine. Steinem actually, um she really was imagining some kind of periodical that would be what she called a connective tissue that could sort of connect women from across the country um, so that they could actually know what each other was doing and um, that right, get information from each other. It was some of her um, colleagues, like Patricia Carbine, they really were the ones imagining too a really a mass media magazine that could reach women who weren't already part of feminist movements. With this, Ms. Magazine began. It was first published in 1972 as a preview issue included in New York Magazine. New York provided all the funding, while most other investors were shying away from a new feminist publication. The first issue of Ms. depicting a blue, goddess-like woman attempting to balance an array of responsibilities sold out nationwide in only eight days. The publishers had no idea this, that the need was out there. Um, in a way, for Dan did for the books what Steiner does within magazines. What made Ms. Magazine, unlike any women's publication before it, was its ability to involve women as political participants. By being a mainstream, widely published magazine, it became a mouthpiece for the women's liberation movement, reaching more people than the smaller feminist publications ever had. The second issue of Ms. was not published by New York, meaning the lack of funding for the magazine became an issue. However, Steinem used her influence to get Warner Communications to invest $1 million for a 25% stake in the magazine. When the creators um, started Ms., they were really dreaming that they could have a magazine that would not have ads that were offensive to women. But they were in a position where they needed the ads, because what pays for a magazine is the advertisements. The staff of Ms. had other problems besides funding, however. A major theme in Ms. was the need for women to form a sisterhood in order to have any real influence. I think there is a real celebration of sisterhood. The problem with that is, these are not sisters coming from the same family. Women were often unwilling to transgress racial and social boundaries to unite with one another. Splintering within women's liberation was a major cause of its downfall. It has to be a coalition of, of sex and race. There are two caste systems that can only be uprooted together. The success of Ms. made it a jumping off point for women in publishing. Its staff was constantly changing as women left for higher level jobs. In the 1980s, women's magazines were focused on self-improvement and personal transformation not so much sisterhood and radicalism. Ms. found it had to adapt to this new atmosphere in order to stay afloat. The magazine can still be found online, although print subscriptions are available. Steinem remains a consulting editor on the magazine. If there hadn't been Gloria Steinem, I'm not even sure how it could have gotten off the ground. What Steinem had were those connections and that kind of vision of using those connections. Today, Ms. is regarded as the first mainstream feminist magazine. It introduced and popularized new terms such as sexual harassment and battered women and helped to make feminism available to a wide range of women. Ms. was ultimately more than just a magazine. It gave voice to a movement. In 2013, Steinem received the Medal of Freedom, an award she called, quote, a medal for the entire women's movement.